Good evening. We welcome you to Bethany Presbyterian Church's Maundy Thursday service where we reenact and relive and re-experience Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. Let us all stand for the call to worship. <coughs> Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I loved you, and you also should love one another. On this day, Christ the Lamb of God gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered with his disciples the other On this day, Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us.
tell me your will. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. So together let us declare God's assurance of forgiveness. May the God of mercy, who forgives all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination printed in our bulletins. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses one through four. Let us listen for the word of God. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If the household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Here ends our scripture reading, the word of the Lord.
Our second scripture reading comes from John's Gospel, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Let us listen again for the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. For it, I have set you and set before you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Here ends our scripture reading, the word of the Lord. Fred Craddock tells about something that happened many years ago while he was driving cross country. He had stopped on a, at a small diner somewhere in the south to refresh himself with an early breakfast and some coffee. He had been driving through the night and now it was getting close to dawn and he was sleepy. As he waited for his breakfast order to come, Craddock spied a black man who had just come in and sat down on a stool at the lunch counter. The diner's manager then began to treat the black man with a contempt that was clearly born out of a deep-seated racism. The manager was rude, insulting, demeaning toward his black guest. As he sat in his booth a little while away from the counter, Craddock wrestled with whether to say something to this manager for his shameful racist conduct or whether not to. Meanwhile, the black man quickly slurped down some coffee and fled into the darkness. Craddock remained silent. I didn't say anything, he confessed. I quietly paid my bill left the diner and headed back to my car. But as I walked through the parking lot, somewhere in the distance, I heard a rooster crow. One Sunday, Fred Craddock was a guest preacher at a church and he preached a sermon that had that very story in it. And after the service, a man came up to him in the North X, shook Craddock's hand vigorously and said, Thank you, Pastor, for that was a truly powerful sermon. It really hit home. Oh, but by the way, what was that business with the rooster? You and I know about the business with the rooster. Simon Peter hears a rooster crow and he remembers Christ's words. I tell you the truth before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And Simon Peter wept. 
Nothing that happened that evening had gone as Simon Peter expected. It was just before the Passover feast. The disciples had gathered with their master for a meal, and they did not know it would be the last meal they would share before his crucifixion. Suddenly, without warning, the master got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around his waist. In the early days of Christianity, kings and emperors used to copy Jesus' actions on Monday, Thursday. They would wash the feet of poor people, sometimes of beggars. The kings of England would have homeless people brought to them, one for each year of their reign, and would wash their feet before giving them clothing and food. But all this ended in 1685, when King James II decided that this was beneath his dignity. He decided instead to give money to poor people who were less scruffy and more deserving. And that custom has survived until today. And this sounds a lot like us, doesn't it? It's easier to give money than it is to humble ourselves in personal service to the least and the lowest. But listen to Christ's words. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Does this mean that we should have regular foot washing ceremonies? Some groups do, and many report that it's a meaningful experience. David McKenna, president of Asbury Theological Seminary, tells of his first foot washing service. He says, stripping off the colors of his academic hood the grandeur of his presidential robe and the pious vestments of his clerical status, I took a towel, wrapped it around my waist, knelt on the floor, and poured water in the basin. Sliding the bowl ahead of me, I moved on my knees to wash the feet of the people who represented different roles, status, and segments of our campus community. Slipping off a shoe at a time, I washed and dried a narrow foot that characterized an Asian ancestry, a perspiring foot that betrayed discomfort in a public setting, an alabaster foot so dainty that it snuggled deeply into the palm of my hand, an outsized foot so big that I almost chuckled as it overran the borders of the bowl, a trembling foot of a prominent scholar that caught me completely by surprise and a heavily veined foot that showed the sign of advancing age. In those feet, I saw the whole world come together. I knelt before a microcosm of the world, its people and their needs, without regard to race, sex, age, or status, including the brilliant and the troubled, the old and the young, the clumsy and the dainty, the calm and the anxious, the secure and the fearful. I knew all of the people face to face as their president, but until that moment, I didn't know them hand to foot as their servant. The lesson will never be forgotten. When we kneel as servants at the foot of the cross, the whole world comes together. A ceremony of feet washing can be a powerful experience, but that's not the real focus of Christ's teaching. The real focus is that we should be one another's servants. This is Christ's will for us, that we should love one another 
and serve one another as he served us. Amen. of Jesus' disciples, although they loved him, they disappointed and failed him. And yet, gathering with these imperfect friends at this last meal, Jesus washed their feet in service and then extended the bread and cup to each. Jesus called them to love one another and invited them to share in his very life and in his acceptance of the road ahead. We are humbled, honored, and inspired by the deep love Christ extended to the world. And we take seriously the calling to be the body of Christ today. Forgive us when we disappoint and fail you, and guide us back to a place of trust and faithful living. Grant us the vision to see the world as you see it, with love and compassion for each creature and all of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now offer to God our gifts and our tithes. Tonight's offering will be donated to Journey Home.
having again been reminded of Christ's sacrificial death. Having received more than enough for our material needs, we share our resources with others. Having received the good news of Jesus Christ, we give us the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite our deacons forward for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus gathered with his disciples in an opera room, a borrowed opera room, to celebrate the Last Supper with his disciples. After giving thanks to God for the bread, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Each time you do this, do so, remembering me. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, Behold the cup of the new covenant. Sealed in my blood, each time you drink from this cup, do so, remembering me. We invite you to partake of the bread immediately upon receiving it, symbolizing that we are individuals who gather together to form the body of Christ. And we ask that you hold the cup so that we may partake of it together, symbolizing that while we are individuals, we are one body of which Christ is the head.
Please pray, pray with me the prayer for me and print it in our bulletin. Eternal God, we give thanks for the bread of life and the power of eternal salvation. Grant that you may be strengthened in your service to share the good news of the gospel.
Uh, let's be ready.